Will, welcome to a mission moment here at Union Baptist Association. William J. Lindsay, Above and Beyond Fellowship Church. Wow, this is a good thing for you to be with us today. Good to have you back with us here at UBA, man. Yes, happy, on? happy to be here. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, Will. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself here, man. You, um, you, you, you've been with UBA about how long now? Since oh, 16, 15, 16 years. 15, 16 years. Yes. When you came to us, it was just you, your wife, and the baby. That's it. That's it. <laughs> And you started your church in the inner cities of uh, Acres Home, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, which is a, a somewhat of an inner city part of Houston. Yes. And uh, things weren't going well for you. Really wasn't. <laughs> really wasn't. Well, uh, tell us what was going on at that time when you came to us to talk well, about planting the church. Well, when we first planted the church, uh, we were in a, a community that was already overpopulated with churches. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to do something different, something mm -hmm. new. We wanted to offer something new. Mm -hmm. And that particular community wasn't ready at that particular time for the new style of worship and ministry mm -hmm. that we were offering. Mm -hmm. And so uh, struggling, you know, uh, about a couple of years in that community, we decided to relocate mm -hmm. and really felt that God was leading us to relocate into the suburbs. Well, that leads into this idea that you became an, an innovator uh, not taking no for an answer. Yes. And start rethinking what church needs to look like, what it needs to be at, where, what do we need to do, which caused you to be where you are today. And, and your church has gone from you, your wife, and your, 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 your baby. Yes. To now 750, 800 or more in worship? In worship, yes. Wow, that's close pretty Close to 1,500 deep. on membership, but you know, Sunday morning worship, close to seven to 800. My goodness. Yes. As you and I talked, we were thinking about uh, what, what has caused this unique growth uh, and you, you said Ricky it's all about innovation yes it's all about thinking about new ideas yes uh, thinking of new ways to, to, to bring about an old message yes yes about, uh, the gospel of the kingdom of God exactly and uh, you seem to have mastered that and you've conducted a conference on innovation yes uh, for the african-american church or innovation in the black church yes which I said was right on time yes, yes. Uh, putting on some new wineskin to host that new wine that Jesus Christ brought to us almost 2,000 years ago. Yes, yes. Well, talk to us a little bit, a little bit about this idea of innovation. You know, what is innovation, and and how would you define innovation? Innovation, in its simplest terms, is just basically implementing something new. Mm -hmm. It's about creating something new. It's about a new way. It's about a new device, a new method a new concept. Mm -hmm. It's all about newness. Mm -hmm. That's basically what innovation is. Wow. And so th this idea of innovation is uh, something that most pastors and church planters and people like, like me are really uh, afraid of because many times what you think of as something new, which it is, may not work. So how do you deal with that How do you, as a pastor? Well, being a leader, uh, you have to understand uh -huh risking mm -hmm. and you have to be a risk taker mm -hmm. so you have to just go for it mm -hmm. and you have to try I don't call it failure I call it experimenting uh -huh. and so if it doesn't work you know you try something else and eventually you know you'll become successful eventually because you won't keep failing wow. something is gonna work when you try and you <laughs> you, you lunch out on faith you know Peter you know stepping out of the boat that was innovative <laughs> yeah. you know true uh, at his best because he failed but he really didn't fail mm -hmm. you know true failure is not when you step out the boat mm -hmm. and walk on water wow. true failure is when you never leave the boat you know that, that reminds me uh, not only the story about Peter but the story about about God he's an innovator yes he is uh, he created exactly some and fifth word in the Bible <laughs> creation. And some things didn't work and so he kind of put that to the side and started something new and, exactly and uh, promised uh, Noah that he wouldn't do it again the way he did it yes so <laughs> well tell us a little bit about um, um, what do innovative leaders do I mean what do they do you said that a leader is an innovator yes so what do they do they uh, conceptualize, they transubstantiate, they transform lives, they transform communities. Mm. Uh, they navigate uncharted territories. Mm. Uh, they are innovators, they cast visions. Now they don't predict the future, mm. but they can create the future. They can <laughs> shape the culture. Mm. And basically, they just inspire. Wow. You know, they, they invent, mm. you know, 
they change lives. Yeah. They seem to be the kind of people that lead people to change. Yes, exactly. And that's what makes a leader. Yes. A person who leads people uh, to change. We, exactly. We, at UBA, we, when you first met us, we were thinking about this definition of, of a leader. Yes. And we came up with this statement that still rings true today, mm -hmm. that a leader is a person who influences people yes. to participate in God's purposes. Exactly. So he's a, he's a person who influences people. Yes. And I guess the influence comes with being able to create things yes. that will cause people to move toward a particular purpose in life. Exactly. And you seem to have done that very well. Thank you. Thank very you. good. So uh, what is what is it that 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 many African American churches uh, uh, refuse to, to become innovators? Um, you and I come out of the African American culture. Yes, and, yes. And many African traditional, American traditional, traditional deep-rooted. Deep-rooted traditional churches, and these are good churches. Exactly. But they seem um, not to be willing to change. Yes. Why do you think uh, they, they're not willing to implement new models of ministry? I think analysis of paralysis. <laughs> analysis of paralysis. Yes, you know, I think that they hold on to the old mental models mm -hmm. and perceptions mm -hmm. that they value so deeply mm -hmm. that sometimes their mental models limit their creativity and innovation. Mm -hmm. You know, the last seven words of a dying church is, We've never done it like this before. Mm -hmm. And once a church gets to that conclusion, it's pretty much history. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that we have to minister effectively in the 21st century. We have to have ministries that's culturally relevant. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't minister in a Jetsons world mm -hmm. using Flintstones methods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds like a winner there because what you're seeing in church today is the uh, the, un the the uh, the unwillingness yes uh, to unlearn some things exactly uh, to learn some new things yes but it's it's not changing the message yes but it's thinking of a new way to package it and get it to the people who are thinking differently exactly than uh, the people of the past you're right because the gospel is relevant right we just got to show its relevancy wow. uh -huh. and that's something that the church and the African-American community has to do a better job in packaging the message of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Well, give us a quick example of how your church has created innovative ideas uh, to reach the people that you've reached based on the context of the people where you are. Yes. Uh, give us some ideas about what you've done in your church. Um, maybe give a picture about Sunday. Yes, yeah, Sunday morning service is where it all takes place. Mm -hmm. Because on Sunday morning service, uh, we have uh, incorporated the arts. We have dance, praise dance. We have drama. We have skits. We have, uh, we have rap. Mm -hmm. uh, we just invite the arts. Mm -hmm. We uh, design uh, our Sunday morning worship experiences. They are carefully planned and packaged. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the point is to create such a worship experience that it connects a person with a holy God. Wow. So do you do social networking kind of uh, uh, stuff that uh, folks are doing today with Facebook? and Most definitely, most definitely. You know, with, with 60 million people on Facebook, you know, we have a Facebook account as well. And uh, so we Facebook, we, we tweet, uh, we wow. blog, wow. and you can get all of that information from our website at above.org. Uh -huh. And so, yes, we're very involved in social networking because I think social networking is one of the new innovations that can help us really reach the younger generation and those who are out there in the social world. Well, you also mentioned something to me about uh, uh, putting your church on, on, on your iPhone as an app. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. That, is that something that uh, we, we can do now? Is uh, I can take my church and yes. ma make it an application and, and put it on, on my iPhone or my members can get yes. on their iPhone and click up our church and yes. tweet and all that stuff. Exactly. Wow. And that's just the new world, you know. I mean, of course, there's an app for everything, but yeah. thank God there's even an app for your <laughs> church. And so you can go uh, to the uh, Apple Store through iTunes, mm -hmm. and you can uh, download the Above and Beyond Fellowship app. And from that app, you can give online. Uh, you can get more information about our worship services. Uh, you can uh, actually watch us live streaming from the app. Wow. Yes. My goodness, that is awesome. Because I was, I was watching television the other day and ABC News, that they were talking about these uh, young people 
uh, ninth graders who created an app for their school where kids can check their homework assignments. Yes. The teachers can be in contact with uh, the students with an application yes. on their iPhones. And yes. I said, that's pretty neat. Yes. So now this is innovation. Yes. You know, our schools are becoming more innovative and in communicating to students and exactly. parents. Exactly. And now the church needs to find innovative ways to communicate the gospel. Exactly. Wow. Well, how can w one become an innovative leader? Well, you just basically have to express yourself. You have to dare to be different. You have to be willing to change. I used to be a traditional missionary Baptist pastor, mm -hmm. but uh, I've got out of the suits. Uh, I changed my hair. I uh, see. Yes, I see. <laughs> and I love, I love it, and I yeah. feel Looks good on you, man. free. Thank you so much, and, yeah. and I'm free yeah. to express myself in this type of way. You know, it's all about being who God called you to be. We don't need another T.D. Jakes. Mm. He's a great man of God. Yeah, we don't right. need an another Kirby John Cockwell, right. great man of God. Right, right. We need another you. Wow. We need you to be you, and we need you to express yourself with the gifts, talents, and abilities that God has given you. When you think about John the Baptist, he was a true innovator. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this guy was outside the box. Matter of fact, there was no box <laughs> with John the Baptist. <laughs> and Jesus said there was no greater man Ooh. than John the Baptist. Mm. And he had a simple message. He didn't have a three-point sermon. He had a one-point sermon. Yeah. Repent. <laughs> he had a simple message, a simple ministry. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that simplicity is one of the keys to successful innovation. Wow. I can see Zacchaeus now. Oh, John is out there. <laughs> oh, he's embarrassing me. I've got to go to the temple. Yes. And they're talking about John, but John was more effective even than probably his own father. He really was. And he was the people of that generation. Yes, and he was different. You know, Craig Crochet has stated that if you innovate, you've got to be prepared for everybody telling you that you're nuts. <laughs> and uh, yes, so to be innovative and to do something different, sometimes it can actually be lonely. Now, that's a good question. You know, how do you handle criticism uh, from uh, religious people who say, you know, we've never done it that way before and we're not going to do it. It's going to be over my dead body yes. and we're going to start tweeting or even allowing these kids to do texting while they're in church when they're trying to find the, the, the scripture because they don't have a Bible. They, they brain their iPhone. Right. And try to, exactly. You know, and you got grandma sitting next door and says, that's not how we did it. You need King James. <laughs> you, need, you need to get this big, you know, four by four looking Bible. And, exactly. And, and, and that's going to be the way you communicate the gospel. So how do you handle criticism in this? innovative idea, the innovative world that you live in? Well, I understand that some people are so close-minded mm -hmm. and some people are still living in the 70s and the 80s right, right. and actually many people are living in the 20th century mm -hmm. and we, we're, we're just tapping into mm -hmm. the 21st century wow. and we're really living life in the new millennium mm -hmm. and we feel good about that, we're comfortable with that, we understand our church culture, it's an urban church culture. I always tell people this is not your grandmother's church but she's welcome to come <laughs> because our church is made up of 20s and 30s. Mm. Uh, many of the um, millennials are in our congregation, those born between 1980 and 2000, according to Tom Rayner. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to reach that younger generation, uh, because the millennials, they are the largest generation we've ever seen, larger than the baby boomers. Mm -hmm. They are the most educated generation we've ever seen, but yet they are the most on spiritual generation that we've ever seen. And if we're going to reach them, I can't reach them with God me over great Jehovah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we and gotta... that was great for our forefathers. Exactly. It yes, it was. Absolutely great. Yes, it I, was. I grew up with that. Exactly. Uh, we, we grew up with that. We, yeah. And, it, it, and, and I've grown out of that. <laughs> you know, it, it took me a while to grow out of it. Yes. And uh, we don't do it on Sunday mornings. In fact, I would have some traditional brothers come by and, and when I say we're going to get started with praise and worship. They said, no, no, we got to have devotion first. <laughs> yes. And it's the guy me over without great Jehovah. And I'll honor it and say, go right ahead. And no problem. Right. But I lose my audience yes. <laughs> because they yes. said, what are they doing? Yes. Uh, but this idea of being a leader of, of, in, of innovation uh, must be willing to accept criticism yes. and feel good about themselves. Feel good about, about yourself. About who God has called you to be. Exactly. And, and be that. And yes. there's an audience out there that want you. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't believe God wants you and I to be a copy. I don't think he wants us to be a copy. Right. I mean, I don't think we should die 
a cheap copy. <laughs> I think we should die an original, mm -hmm. you know, because God wow. wants to use us with our own unique abilities, talents, and gifts, wow. and he really wants us to feel comfortable with how he shaped us for our own personal destiny. Wow. So we need to rob the grave of its potential of robbing us of our individuality. Exactly. That's so originality. true. And That's just true. Rob the grave of that and say, you're not going to take that from me. Yes. Uh, you can take my, my bones and, exactly. and this, this piece of ash, but you cannot take my identity. My identity. And you'll be surprised in many of our local pulpits, mm. there is an identity crisis. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I used to be in that boat, too. Yes, I think we all were. Yeah. You know, we all wanted to be like, you know, some of the hoopers and, uh, right. you know. I stand in the mirror many days to learn how to go, well, <laughs> and uh, now I, I don't think I've used that in, in maybe maybe two or three years. Exactly. Because I'm changing the way I communicate exactly. to a different audience. Yes. Well, very good. Well, t tell me, what would the black church look like tomorrow? I mean. Sad to say, the black church will look like it looked yesterday if it doesn't change with the pace of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take vision casting, scenario planning mm. from leaders mm. who's willing to understand the cultural shifts mm. because we have so much information. Time is moving so fast. You know, the old song says, time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping <laughs> into the future. Once you learn one new methodology, one new concept, mm -hmm. then it's time to change again mm -hmm. to keep ministry culturally relevant. Well, how does a church keep up with all of that? I mean, what do you, what do, you do to keep up with all of that? You read, you yes. visit, up, well, how do you do this? I think you have to understand the culture and you have to see each new generation that's coming up mm -hmm. and you have to just engage with the culture, mm. but not embrace the culture. I understand. And I think that's very important. Engage, but do not embrace. Mm. Get close enough, but not too close. Mm -hmm. You know, even Pastor Paul said, I became all things to the Jews mm. so I can reach some of the Jews. And I think when we get close enough, but not too close, we can be effective in ministering. Yeah. To this generation. So you, you, I think what you said is that the church now must become students of culture. Must come students of culture. Yeah. We must Constantly understand that. By in going, becoming flesh and dwelling among them. Exactly. That's exactly what Jesus That's did. That's exactly what he did. In Luke 15, verse 1, he's sitting, he's eating mm -hmm. with sinners. Yeah. You know who has a problem with that? Mm. Church people. Yeah, the Pharisees. <laughs> exactly. The religious yeah. people. Yeah had a problem with Jesus yeah. engaging, but not embracing the culture. Wow. And even accusing them of being a wine-bibber, a drunk, yes. Yes. because he hung around with them. He, exactly. And, you know, we got some, some hip-hop church planters who, who are very quietly going into strip, strip joints. Yes. And they, are, they came out of strip clubs. Yes. And got saved. Now yes. they go back in. Yes. And I, I say, well, what do you do when you get to those clubs? And what an innovative idea. They just drink Coke <laughs> and get to know the bartender who yes. knows everybody. Yes. And yes. before you know it, they're praying for people and who are broken. Yes, exactly. Uh, they get a chance to talk about the kingdom of God. Yes. And now many of them are coming out of the strip clubs. Exactly. Isn't that wonderful that God wants to dwell among sinners? Exactly. Well, so that's like a new idea here, an innovative idea. That's a idea new concept. For the church today. Yes, it is. And that's ministry. That's ministry. Wow. Yes. So, so the church of the future must become a student of people. Must become a student of people. And uh, we must be able to relate to people. We can't reach them mm -hmm. if we can't relate to them. That's so true. That's so true. Wow. I'm sure that many people that are listening to us are saying, wow, I want to be innovative. Yes. So how can the black church become innovative? What do they need to be doing? goes back to what I said earlier. Yeah. We must understand the times. The Bible said that the sons of Issachar mm -hmm. understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Mm -hmm. I think the African American church must look at models who are doing innovation on the mm -hmm. cutting edge. There are many churches that we all can learn from. Of course, I learn from churches larger than ours mm -hmm. as well as smaller than ours. Mm -hmm. And I think when we look at models and we have models before mm -hmm. us, then it can help us be more effective in implementing mm -hmm. new innovation, new concepts uh -huh. into our local church. So your, your conference, for example, on uh, the innovative black church. Yes. If, if folks knew about that, they could have come. 
but you also have uh, uh, coaching me. Yeah, coaching me to lead. Coach me to lead. Yes. So uh, if a church wants to become innovative, they can be coached like you were coached. Exactly. Now you willing to coach others. Exactly. Well, wow, that sounds like a kingdom idea. Yes. So yes. tell us a little bit about uh, coach. Uh, coaching me to lead is a. Me to lead. Yes, coaching me to lead is a leadership network that will help build a winning synergistic culture in your church. Wow. We train leaders and we train them on marketing, branding, mm -hmm. leadership development, assimilation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we also train them in small groups. Mm -hmm. uh, we train them as well as in infrastructure, mm -hmm. systems, and things of that nature to help really build a healthy church that will do ministry and be more kingdom effective in the 21st century. Wow, that's really good. So if they wanted to get in contact with you related to coaching me to lead, yes. how could they do that? Uh, they can visit us online at www.coachmetolead.com. Coachmetolead.com. Coach uh, I got one final question for you. I wish sure. I could keep you here all day to kind of pick your brains and kind of get some more answers for my own personal life yes. related to innovation uh, and for our audience. But this idea of uh, innovation needs to be taken with a lot of caution. And yes. What cautions would you say we need to look at? Some things we need to look at very cautiously as we move toward becoming a innovative uh, church. Yes, and I think that's a very good question, Rick. Mm -hmm. I think as we implement innovations in our churches, mm -hmm. we must never forget that God is the ultimate source of mm -hmm. church growth. We can have gadgets and gizmos and mm -hmm. colorful websites and beautiful billboards mm -hmm. and we can have lights and video cameras, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, unless the Lord builds the house, mm -hmm. they that labors, labors in vain. Now that's an innovative idea. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we can't ever get away from that it's not by power, mm -hmm. nor is it by might, <laughs> but it's by my spirit, mm -hmm. said the Lord. And if God doesn't breathe on our innovations, mm. then our church is just uh, basically a dead church. And we're just doing a lot of activities. Mm. We're doing a lot of cool things, mm. but there's no power. There's no anointing. Mm. And when there's no anointing, mm. uh, there's no freedom. There's, there's no liberation. And yokes are not being destroyed. So the caution here is to uh, make sure that the Holy Spirit yes. is, uh, is pulling the, the boat. And making sure that he's present. Yes. Uh, making sure that it's not about innovation. Yes. It's about the creator. It's about the creator. And if we continue to lift up Jesus, mm -hmm. he said mm -hmm. he would draw wow. all men. Not billboards, yeah. not websites, mm -hmm. not skits, mm -hmm. not praise dance. Lift Jesus up and he'll draw all men unto himself. This is why maybe the traditional church is uh, not being very effective in uh, impacting the culture. Uh, is because it, it missed that caution. It's now about what we did in the past. We're going to keep doing it. Exactly. And the Holy Spirit is not in it. It's just routine. A, a routine, experiential, uh, uh, an emotional experience. Yes. But there's no change, no transformation. Exactly. Because in the average African-American church, I can visit there for the very first time mm. and almost predict exactly what's going to happen at that particular service, Wow. what particular hymns they're wow. going to sing, what time the pastor's going to do his famous hoop and leap out the pulpit. Right. I can almost predict that. Mm -hmm. And so wow. when worship is predictable and it's so routine, then there's no newness, there's no new wine, there's no fresh anointing. Wow. And we need the fresh wind, fresh fire. Wow. We need the presence of God, wow. you know, because God is who draws people to himself. Right. And so, so many churches are so traditional in their thinking because of their mental models. They've always done it like this. Wow. And they refuse to change. And we're losing the baby busters, my generation. Mm -hmm. They are out of church right. because they can predict it. And it's the same old thing. Wow. But if we can implement a new way of worshiping, a new way of receiving God's word, a new way of doing church that's fresh, mm -hmm. that's anointed, man, you'll be amazed wow. how that can broaden a person's thinking mm -hmm. And it can draw a younger generation back to church. Mm -hmm. People who left will come back to church because they're looking for something new. And remember that God said mm -hmm. in Isaiah 43, he was doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. You remember when Jesus came on the scene, he mm -hmm. talked about new wine. Yeah. He says, there's a new commandment. If any man be in Christ, he is a 
new creation. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. All of the newness. New, Sing unto the yeah. Lord a new, new song. song. Yeah. And now we are even under a new covenant. <laughs> and someday there's going to be a new heaven. heaven. Hallelujah. And so it is a new day, wow. and we got to embrace the newness yeah. of what God is doing. He said, forget yeah. the former things. I'm doing a new thing. Can't you see it? Ooh. Can't you perceive it? Church, wake up. Yeah. It's a new day. Wow. And uh, so I even preach out of an iPad. It's a, it's a new day. It's a new day. <laughs> Coach me to lead. Okay? Coach me to lead. <laughs> exactly. Now we're asking the younger generation to coach us. Yes. Empower us. Yes. In fact, we need to be empowering you. Wow. And hopefully you feel empowered today. I really do. And I'm sure our audience that are going to be looking at this, hopefully for days to come, that they'll see that you have empowered the church today. Uh, to think differently yes uh, about church about the kingdom yes about the the mind of god and creating new things yes thank you so much for being with us pastor Lindsay. yes thank you so much right. rick and if they need more information about right. above and beyond right. fellowship we're, we're they can visit us online at above.org okay that's above.org wow what a missional moment man thank you very thank much thank you rick god, god bless, bless you man yes thank sir you.